Part 1. Numbers. You will find this on page 2 in the Namibia Mathematics Grade 9 textbook, Y equals MX plus C to success. Let's first look at the classification of numbers. Complex numbers can be divided into two groups, real numbers and imaginary numbers, non-real numbers. Now, all the numbers that we use in our maths calculations at school, that is real numbers. Imaginary numbers do not exist in school maths. If you press it on the calculator, you will get an error. Rational numbers. That can be written as vulgar fractions. Something on top, something at the bottom. But just remember, the value of B cannot be zero. And then there's a few examples. The square root of 36, which is 6. You can get a negative cube root, so that will give you negative 3. And all, as, and all recurring decimals can also be written as vulgar, as a vulgar fraction. Irrational numbers. They cannot be written as an exact vulgar fraction. So it's, it's giving you the decimals and it's just continuing, continuing, continuing. The same with the letter pi. Okay, now rational numbers divide into two groups again. Integers and fractions. Now remember integers is like whole numbers. It's all the positive and the negative whole numbers, meaning just having a whole part, not a comma. Okay, fractions, it can be vulgar or common fractions, it can be recurring decimals, and it can be terminating decimals. That's decimals that stop. So you can make it a vulgar fraction by saying 3 and 4, 8, 1 over 1,000, and then you can simplify it. Okay, then integers divide into two groups again. Negative integers, so from 0, all the negative, but 0 is not included. So it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then whole numbers or counting numbers. Now remember that 0, so the O of whole numbers tells you it's starting at 0. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So the 0 is included with the whole numbers, not with the negative integers. And then whole numbers divide into two groups, the 0 and then natural numbers. That starts with 1. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and you can go on. Okay, and then natural numbers divide into a 1, so it's on its own, and then prime numbers. Remember, prime numbers, a number which has only two factors, the number 1 and the number itself. So like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. And then composite numbers is all the in-between numbers. Remember, 1 is excluded, but all the in-between numbers between prime numbers. So that will be 4, that will be 6, s that will be 8, that will be 9. And then the last one I want to show you is just to remember what is square numbers. The result is the product when the same number is used two times. So 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, and so on. And then cubic numbers... The result in the product when the same number is used three times. So 1 to the power of 3 is 1. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And so on. Okay, let's just revise the rules of divisibility. So how do I know if a number can divide by 2? A number is divisible by 2 if the last digit is a 0, 2, 4, 6, an even number. For example, can you see the last digit? It's 8, so it's divisible by 2. It's an even number. And then what was divisibility by 3? A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Meaning, you will say 1 plus 6 plus 8. So that's 7 plus 8, that's 15. And 15 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 1, 6, 8 will also be divisible by 3. And then 5, a number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is either 0 or 5. So it can be a 5 or it can be a 0. And then 10, a number is divisible by 10 if the last digit is 0. So if it ends on a 0. Now, divisibility tests can be used to find factors of large whole numbers quickly and thus determine if they are prime or composite numbers. 
when we're working with large whole numbers, tests for divisibility are very useful. Now, let's look at an example. Determine whether 1530 is divisible by 2, 3, 5, or 10 by using the rules of divisibility. Don't use your calculator. So, just start. Can it divide by 2? Yes, because 0, it's ending on a 0. Okay, can it divide by 3? So, add up 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 0, that's 9. And 9 is divisible by 3, so that whole number will be divisible by 3. Can it be divisible by 5? Yes, because it's ending on a 0. And then, can it be divisible by 10? Yes, because the large digit is in 0. So, this number is divisible by 2, 3, 5, as well as by 10. Okay, I want you to stop the video, and I want you just to do 1A and C, as well as number 2. And then, as soon as you are finished, you can continue with the video. We are at try now, one. Okay, let's start. Number one, A. Then it's two, two, five. Now, if I look, I is it divisible by two? No, because it's ending on an odd number. So it's not divisible by two. If I look, if it's divisible by three, so I can say it's two plus two plus five. And that will give me 9. So it's divisible by 3. Okay. Is it divisible by 5? Yes, because the last digit is a 5. So it's also divisible by 3. And will it be divisible by 10? No, because the last digit is not a 0. So it's only divisible by 3 and 5. Okay, let's look at number C. Now, the number, it's a big number, so it's 3, 5, 1, 2, 0. So let's start with the first one. It's divisible by 2 because it's ending with a 0. So I'm just going to say the and I'm just going to short it now, so it's divisible by 2. Let's test for 3. So it's 3 plus 5, it's 8, 9, 10, 11. No, 11 is not divisible by 3, so it's not divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 5? Yes, because the last digit is a 0, so it's also divisible by 5. And then the last one, is it divisible by 10? Yes, because the last digit is a 0. So this number is divisible by 2, 5, and 10. Okay. And then we look at number 2. If the number 30, is the number 31 prime or composite, use the divisibility where possible to find your answer. Now, if I test that number, 31, it cannot divide by 2. If by 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, so it cannot divide by 3. It cannot divide by, by 7. It cannot divide by 5 or 10. So it can only, let's write, it can only divide by 1 and 31. So therefore, it's a prime number. Okay.